Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Jeskai, a Zergo and Ojutai deck that's kind of playing out like a tempo deck. You've got some counter spells, a few burn spells to clear a path, but then once you slam down a Zergo and Ojutai, you can turn the corner pretty quickly and close out the game. Zergo being our main win condition, but also a source of card advantage. A 5 mana 4 4 legendary orc dragon with flying and haste, and it also has hexproof as long as it entered the battlefield this turn. So it has that built in protection, which is quite nice. And then whenever one or more dragons we control deal a combat damage to a player or battle, we get to look at the top three cards of our library and put one of those into our hand at the rest on the bottom and we also get to return one of those dragons to its owner's hand. So Zergo not only provides card advantage but will also protect itself since we can just pick it back up and then replay it with hexproof on the following turn so the opponent may never get a chance to take it out. And then another important card here is Invasion of Tarkir, the new battle card type. Two mana, five defense counters that we need to try and take out. And then when it enters the battlefield, we get to reveal any number of dragon cards from our hand. When we do, Invasion deals X plus two damage to any other target where X is the number of cards revealed this way. So occasionally we'll be able to reveal one or two Zergos from our hand to deal a bit of additional damage with our invasion. And then once it transforms into the Defined Thunder Maw, we get a 4-4 Flying Trample, saying when Whenever a dragon we control attacks, it deals 2 damage to any target. So that applies to the Thunder Maw itself, but it also applies to Zergo and Ojitai. So if we attack with both, we get to deal 4 damage total, which can also quickly add up. And also very fun is to copy Defined Thunder Maw with our Reflection of Kiki-Jiki. Now we've got 2 Defined Thunder Maws, they both attack, dealing 8 damage with their triggers, plus 8 more naturally. So that's 16 damage just with a single Thunder Maw and Reflection. So that's also a lot of fun. And then another great way to transform an early Invasion of Tarkir is with Nahiri's Warcrafting, dealing 5 damage to a creature, Planeswalker or Battle, and then we get to look at the top X cards of our library where X is the excess damage dealt this way, and then we can exile one of those cards and play it until end of turn. So we can even exile a land with it and still play it if we haven't hit our land drop yet. So Warcrafting can be a nice 2 for 1 when taking out smaller creatures, but it can also take out an opposing shield root at 5 toughness, and more importantly we can transform our Invasion of Tarkir on turn 3, just play a turn to invasion, maybe take out an opposing creature, and then at turn 3 deal 5 damage to it and get our defined Thunder Maw online. So that can also be incredibly powerful. And then rounding out the deck, we've got some more cheap burn spells, 4 copies of Play with Fire, 2 copies of Lightning Strike, also very helpful in potentially transforming our invasion of Tarkir, potentially even at instant speed during the opponent's turn to present an ambush Thunder Maw as a blocker. And then the burn spells can of course also help close out the game once we start turning the corner with Zergo and Ojutai. And then we've got some more removal with three copies of Brotherhood's End, dealing three to each creature and each planeswalker can also maybe handle artifacts, can be a nice catch-up mechanism since we're not playing a ton of creatures ourselves, and of course Zergo and Thunder Maw will survive the three damage. And then Fable remains one of the best cards in Standard, the Shaman token often requiring an immediate answer, otherwise the extra mana is gonna snowball into a quick win. The second chapter also a way of discarding access copies of Zergo and Ojutai, which is legendary, and eventually the Reflection as we mentioned, great with Defiant Thunder Maw. And then we've got a nice selection of interaction here with two copies of Destroy Evil to deal with larger creatures or enchantments. Sunset Revelry shines against the red aggro decks, which are quite popular on the ranked ladder, can gain us for life, make two blockers, maybe draw a card as well. And then Impulse to help find some of those more specific cards in certain matchups. And of course, Zergon Ojutai also has that Impulse type effect, which lets us take a look at the top three. So between these, we get to see a lot of our specific two offs. Even though we don't have a ton of copies, we'll still be able to find them. And then a four copies of Make Disappear as a key counter spell to handle nonsense from the opponent. Can also maybe sacrifice some of our Revelry tokens, or maybe some of the tokens from Fable to enable casualty. And then once we have a Zergo hitting the opponent and we feel comfortable just keeping it in play, then we can also try and protect it with our counter spell. And then a mana base sadly does not have a trial land, so that's one of the main drawbacks of the Jeskai Callers in Standard, is that we don't have a trial land to play early, so sometimes we do end up taking a bit more damage from our pain lands, like Sheevan Reef and Battlefield Forge, which are necessary to play some of our red removal spells early, also need double red for Brotherhood's End and Warcrafting. And then we've got the Innistrad dual lands to play later in the game, Sundown Pass, Coast, as well as two copies of Deserted Beach. 
And then the channel lines can also provide extra interaction, making 1-1s one -ones with Crucible also good with the casualty on Make Disappear, Soaring City to bounce something, and Iganjo to deal 4 damage. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems keepable. Second Zergo might be a bit redundant. <laughs> and now there's a third. Well, at least we can deal 5 damage with Invasion. So I can actually transform one on turn 3. So that sort of works out. Kill Naturalist against a Green White Enchantment deck. And no need to reveal extra dragons right now. But next turn, Invasion, deal 5. Still seems better than dealing with a Weaver. Can Brotherhood's end at some point. Okay, let's go for it. Our opponent knows what we're working with. And hopefully our Thunder Maw survives. Not counting on it. Soaring City could maybe bounce an enchantment back, but that's only a temporary solution. Probably need the land to cast Zergo anyways. But yeah, if they don't have removal and just play a creature here, we could decimate their board next turn. And Naturalists into Circle. That will sadly work since our mana value is 2. Well, at least we can reset the board nicely here with the Brotherhood's End. And then next turn take over with the Zergo. Can still damage battles and get extra cards. Opponent does not jump. And a Fable over land, probably. Keep Zergo in play. If they get rid of it, we've got another one. Main concern is Catilda growing larger than a 4-4. Four -four. And there's a Generous Visitor. Alright, so 5-5 five five Catilda. Can we find an answer? If not, Fable can maybe help. I imagine Catilda stays on defense. So yeah, play Fable, could play Revelry as well, making tokens and gaining life. And then if I discard both my Zerg and Ochitai and we draw another invasion, it won't deal as much damage. Although we might be transforming the current one anyway. So a land and one Zergo can go. Double play with fire. Okay, so that's 8 damage total, or we can just damage the invasion to transform it. And then next turn by attacking with two dragons we can deal 4 damage. That seems better. And then copying our Thunder Maul with Reflection could also be fun. Could also kill Visitor here, but our opponent's close to empty-handed. I'm hoping it doesn't matter too much. Alright, so end of turn, damage invasion. Get our Thunder Maw. And then now if I attack, I can deal 4 damage to Catilda. Opponent's likely to trade. And we'll take it from there. Could also just wait until next turn to attack with three dragons, but our opponent might have some removal in the meantime. So that won't necessarily work. So I think we get in while the getting's good. And then if we deal four damage, I guess we could also attack with a shaman token. Trade happens. And if they try and put the aura on one of their creatures, we can play with fire response. And probably want impulse here to maybe dig for a counter spell. Zergo stays in play. 
And I should maybe impulse main phase in case we find a sorcery speed spell. Valor stance. Probably better than another fable here. Can destroy a larger creature. Another visitor. So they will get some counters out of the deal. Just double checking here. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. We can, in fact, play a turn to invasion, turn three, transform it with a warcrafting. Even have a turn one play with fire. Okay, opponent a white deck with Skrelv. Seems fine to take out, or we can just take it out with Invasion next turn. And sure, we'll play Forge. In case we draw another blue source and can hang on to Soaring City. No need to reveal a dragon. Keep Zergo a secret. And yeah, depending on the matchup, a turn 3 Thundermaw of Warcrafting could be quite effective. Is our opponent a poison deck with Hive? Well, a Thunder Maw will deal with those 1 1 tokens pretty easily. So, can our opponent answer our Thunder Maw? Maybe an Annex Sentry, which we currently cannot take out. Can still double spell Fable, play with fire, setting up Zergo on the following turn. Alright, opponent's playing black as well, so maybe a Drown in Icker can kill our Thunder Maw. Alright, opponent has to pass it back. And so let's attack. Possible our opponent's got a second eye Gancho. I guess it's not super likely if they're playing a poison deck, but that would have been a reason to play with Fire Skrelv before attacking, so they cannot deal for damage. So it goes. But it looks like they might have another Igancho here. Nope. Corrupted Conviction to sack and draw two. Fair enough. Yeah, if they hadn't already played Igancho, it would have been more likely for them to have it. But typically you don't see two of these in decks that aren't fully dedicated legendary decks. So yeah, next turn we could deal 4 damage once we attack with Zergo. There's an Elish Norn, so yeah, what if we just play with fire their face before we have to pay the tax, and then next turn play a Zergo Nojitai, attack, that's 4 more damage from triggers, and a make disappear, sure we can keep on top. Not that it answers Elish Norn, but should not need it. Okay, play Zergo, smash, and that's uh, 12 damage total. So yeah, turn 3 Thunder Maw turns out to be pretty effective. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Turn to make disappear, turn 3 Fable. If we find our invasion, we can transform it with a Warcrafting. Opponent's red-black with a turn to Harvester. Sure, we'll counter it here just to gain a small tempo advantage. Zergo's nice. Could hang on to both my mountains, can maybe afford to discard one of them since we're likely to draw an extra land, or maybe make a treasure to cast Zergo. Alright, Shaman down. Picked up another land. So now I maybe discard two mountains. Warcrafting unfortunately is a sorcery, so my mana will go to waste. Unless your opponent plays a haste creature we can Iganjo, but I doubt it. Flash Quarters next. Okay. So for now, we could Warcrafting before playing a land. So I can still maybe hit a land of Warcrafting and then Impulse, as opposed to Zergo. We'll be forced to pick it back up. 
and then a flash gorger is going to make it pretty difficult to race. Alright, hit a land. And once we have more mana, it's also going to be easier to pick up Zergo constantly so we don't expose it to removal. Harvester. Can take out Reflection next turn, although they might have another answer at the ready. Yeah, another Warcrafting looks good, I guess. So now I can play Zergo, and then pick it back up. At least it's protected from a Shieldred's Edict, since we can sack Reflection. And then see what we pick up off of it. I guess her opponent is playing blue, so they might have their own counter spell. Alright, Zergo resolves. And should be able to connect as well here. And this is the exact scenario where Zergo shines against an opponent holding a fistful of removal spells. And we just get to pick it back up. And then probably don't need another Zergo when the plan is to pick it back up. And just grab a play with fire as an answer for Harvester. So we get to keep our reflection around. And then I wouldn't mind hitting my land drops going forward. That opponent had the abrade for reflection anyways. So now a Shieldred's Edict could be a concern. We shipped another Zergo to the bottom. Blazing Sky we can take out. And an invasion deals three damage. Okay. A few ways we can play this. I can just play the invasion, deal three to their face. Warcrafting to transform it, get a Thunder Maw. Could Warcrafting on the Blazing Sky, see if we can maybe hit a land off of it. And clear a path. Destroy evil instead. Alright. That one's gonna go to waste. Okay, maybe Impulse for a land drop. Opponent deciding to make treasures is a bit concerning. Yeah, I don't think we need Revelry or Lightning Strike. Okay. And there's a shield root, which we can answer with a Warcrafting. I guess our opponent does have Plaza of Heroes, which can protect shield root. So that complicates matters a little bit. Yeah, we might just want to play Zergo here. And uh, go face with it. And then if I find a land second main, I can Warcrafting to get the Thunder Maw. Found another invasion, but uh, land will do. And then probably no need to pick up Zergo when we have another one. And no point in going after Shieldred when they can easily protect it. Okay, let's see if uh, Thunder Maw goes a distance. Shield Road attacks for four. And a burn down the house at least also takes care of Shield Road. Did they not have the mana to use Plaza of Heroes? Yeah, they would have been able to make Shield Road indestructible, so maybe a missed opportunity. We get to follow up with another Zergo. And now we'll definitely pick it back up. Don't expect any discard spells. Can bounce something with Soaring City here, and yeah, opponent has seen enough. No instant speed answers to Zergo, and a lot of decks will struggle to handle it. Awesome. 
Okay, we're on the play with uh, Fine Hands. A bit painful with double Sheevan Reef. So ideally we pick up another red source. But we've got Interaction into Fable. Up against turn one Pit Fighter. Definitely worth taking out. Alright, do we want to play an invasion here? Just going upstairs and then can maybe help transform it with a lightning strike. Maybe okay. Since we have a Brotherhood's End to catch us back up on the board. If we had Invasion in our opening hand, I would not have taken out the Pit Fighter. But here we are. Alright, another Pit Fighter into Kumano. Just gonna play a Fable. And then if they take out our Shaman, we've got all the more reason to wipe the board. Scamp with a counter, so now it deals two damage when it dies. And a play with fire. Alright, do I discard double fable or just one of them? So I'm likely gonna brother its end. Pona still gets a hasty 2 2 next turn. Yeah, probably need to discard both fables. Alright, at least I can save myself one damage. And then next turn we'll get Reflection, which can maybe synergize with the Thunder Maw. And double Epicure, down to 9, and an attack down to 7. Okay, another Invasion, so now we could transform our original one, which seems worth it. Just pass and hope to ambush one of the opponent's creatures as well. Warfare, okay. A lot of damage incoming. But we get a 4 4, which can block etching. And then let's do some math. So I'm taking 4 down to 2. Can I kill my opponent next turn? Copy Thunder Maw. Attack for 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I'm going to be too short. Yeah, it's a close call. If I draw another burn spell, I could end the game. If I take 2 down to 4, I'm still dead to a lightning strike, but can probably handle most other cards. So let's just do the math again. Copy Thunder Maw, attack for 8, and then 8 more from the triggers. That's 16, but of course Reflection will be tapped. Yeah, I think we block. Oh man, would have top decked the burn spell too for the win. Alright, so let's just uh, get another Thunder Maw in play then. Got a blocker for Epicure, so now the question is... Do I deal two upstairs and then next turn we should have lethal? I think that's fine. Pit fighter's fine. And lightning strike, that's game. Yeah, one uh, life point could have made the difference had we gone for the more aggressive line. We actually win there, but the pain lands also definitely had their role in this game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little clunky with all the tapped lands, but I think it's still a keep. Can play turn two, play with fire. Up against blue-white, doesn't seem to be particularly aggressive so far. And a wedding announcements. Okay. Do I play with fire a token or do I keep it to maybe help transform invasion? For now we'll play fable. Ooh, a sea shark. That's definitely worth taking out. 
So what do we get rid of? This turn I might want to invasion and play with fire to finish off the shark. Attack with our shaman. Probably don't have time for impulse. And probably don't have time for another fable either. Alright, lands are good. So how does that change things? can still play my removal spells and then we'll keep up a make disappear at the same time. That seems great. No real need to reveal a dragon since we're gonna use a play with fire here for 4 damage. And then the shaman can attack our invasion so a lightning strike can maybe transform it. Opponent takes it so yeah now end of turn if we don't need to counter anything I could transform and get our Thunder Maw. Another announcement. That might be fine. Opponent might attack to draw two, but we get to ambush one of the tokens. And then decimate their board once we play Zergo. Might actually be better to keep up a counter spell so we don't lose our board to a sweeper, which the opponent could easily have. But yeah, opponent already throws in the towel. Next turn we can even copy Thunder Maw with Reflection, which is devastating in and of itself. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands got a lot of interaction. So while we're still missing Ojutai, at least uh, we should be able to survive a while and get to the late game. Up against red aggro, Fable helps. So probably gonna want to keep a Meg disappear next turn and then it's probably fine if I take a beating and then can stabilize with Brotherhood's end. But yeah, killing an adversary here with play with fire could have saved us some damage. Right, if there's a scary three drop we can counter it. Stormseeker is kind of scary. Or I can just take the hit and then Brotherhood's end. But then I'll be at 10. Yeah, I would rather not be at 10. And maybe just play Fable on 3 anyways. And then if they kill the token, that might be a good time to Brotherhood's end. Right, squee to make a token, which we can block. Take five down to eight, but then we should be in decent shape. What to get rid of? Kind of like my entire hand. This turn I get to attack, Brotherhood's ends, and keep up counter spell and play with fire. And then next turn maybe slam Zergo. Could always go digging for Sunset Revelry, of course, but this seems good enough. Four cards in Graveyard, so pretty close to getting a Squee back. And there's another one, so we can just play with fire this one. Keep our treasure for later. More crafting could be nice too. And I'll keep Zergo in play if they want to use multiple burn spells to take care of it. That's fine by me. Found invasion probably as opposed to another Zergo. I doubt our opponent's going to try and kill it. And even if they do, with uh, war crafting I can transform my uh, invasion into Thunder Maw, so we could set that up next turn. Felden attacks. That being said, next turn I could invasion, deal two damage, Warcrafting transform, and copy Thunder Maw with reflection right away. That's a lot of damage. So I'll take it. And a battery. Alright, so pretty cool turn incoming. And 
and this should be able to go face. I think we'll even have a lot of damage to spare, because once we copy Thunder Maw, we'll be controlling two of them. So we'll get uh, six damage from each dragon attacking, plus eight more. So yeah, this is pretty brutal. Reflection alongside Thunder Maw, one of my new favorite combos in Standard. There we have it. All right, so we get to see our Jeskai Zergo and Ojitai deck in action. The deck's a lot of fun to play. There are a lot of different play patterns, all the way from generating a turn three Dreadmaw to potentially picking up Zergo so your battle deals three damage as opposed to two. Got a lot of instant speed play as well with your counter spells. So not an easy deck to master, but there's certainly a lot of intriguing play patterns. And I imagine the deck will only get better in best of three when you can tailor your sideboard to specific matchups, put in more sunset revelries for the mono red matchup, for instance, more counter spells for opposing control decks. And there you have it. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.